Hello to all of our boys and girls at home. I have a really lovely story from first class for you today. But as always, all of the boys and girls from any of the classes are very welcome to listen. This one is called, Can You Catch a Mermaid? And if you want to take a little moment just to have a look at that front cover, what do you think of the illustrations? Isn't the picture beautiful? Now on the back, we do have a little blurb that tells us a little bit about the story. Have you ever seen a mermaid? Eliza has. And this is the story of how she and a little mermaid became the most inseparable of friends. Hmm, what do you think? Will I get started? We'll read about Eliza and the mermaid. Now, look at those beautiful illustrations. Hopefully you can see the picture okay. Have you ever seen a mermaid? Have you ever seen a shimmering tail and some strands of greeny gold hair turning in the water? Maybe not. But did you know that sometimes, just sometimes, a mermaid can turn her fishy tail to legs and come ashore? As long as she keeps hold of something from her ocean home, she can return to the water. But if she should lose that something, she is trapped in land forever. This is the story of Eliza, who really did see a mermaid. Eliza lived with her father, Tom, who was a fisherman. Just him and her comfortable and close, taking care of each other. You are my little dolphin, he would say, holding Eliza tight in his arms, like the harbour walls protecting the little boats. Eliza was shy and liked to play by herself, searching in rock pools and collecting pebbles and shells. Sometimes Tom worried about her. Why don't you go and play with the other children, he would say. But Eliza just shook her head. I only want to be with you, she said. Every day Eliza waved goodbye to her father as he set off in his fishing boat. What shall I bring you for tea today, little dolphin? He would say. Sardines? Hake or herring? Winkles, cockles or crab? And every day Eliza answered, Can you catch a mermaid? One evening, as Eliza was waiting for the chug, chug, chug of her father's boat, she saw a girl of about her own age playing at the water's edge. They smiled at each other shyly. The girl didn't frighten Eliza like the children at school. Instead, Eliza felt curious and wanted to talk to her. The next morning, when Tom set off in his boat, the little girl was there again. She gave Eliza a shell that was pink and gold. And when Eliza put it to her ear, it sang. Can I be your friend, Eliza? Come and play with me. Where the dolphins leap and the seagulls cry and the land becomes the sea. The girls played together all day. By the time evening came and it was time for Eliza to go home, it felt as though they had known each other all of their lives. Her name was Freya. And she had long greeny gold hair and pale, pale skin. Her eyes were the colour of stormy seas. And all about her was the scent of salt and rock pools. Around her neck, she carried a beautiful little myrrh inlaid with pieces of coral and mother of pearl. Sing with me, Eliza, Freya called. And she taught Eliza songs so beautiful that they had to be shared. Dance with me, Eliza, she said. And they danced together like a sea breeze. Eliza didn't know where Freya came from or where she went to at night. Sometimes she was there and sometimes she wasn't. And then Eliza was as lonely as a sandpiper. But one morning, Eliza found Freya crying, running up and down at the water's edge, wringing her hands. I've lost my myrrh. It's gone. It's gone. Oh, please help me to find it, please. For I can't go home without it. Without it, I can't ever go home. And then Eliza realised who Freya was. Tom had told Eliza all about the mermaids, how they can come onto land and go back into the sea if they keep something special from their ocean home with them. Freya was a mermaid and the little mer was her special thing. Eliza took Freya's hand. Don't worry, she said, we'll find your mer. Eliza and Freya searched all day back and forth like beachcombers along the shoreline, but they couldn't find the mirror. That night, Eliza took her friend 
home and she and Carrie, Tom cared for the little mermaid as if she was their own. Deep in the ocean, Freya's mother was looking for her daughter and when the waves whispered the terrible news that the mer was lost and with it her child, her grief was great and unspeakable. Her little Freya! That night, terrible storms battered the coast where Freya was stranded. Meanwhile, Freya stayed with Eliza and Tom and shared their food and their stories and Eliza's little bed. But Freya was unhappy. She fretted for her family and her ocean home. Every morning she set out to search for the myrrh. Now, Eliza had a secret. A few days after Freya's arrival, they were on the beach as usual, looking for the lost myrrh. Eliza clambered on the rocks where the sea rushed at high tide. And there she found the myrrh, covered in seaweed. She washed it quickly, but instead of giving it back to Freya as she knew she should, she put it in her pocket. Eliza couldn't bear Freya to leave. Eliza took the mirror home and hid it in her secret box. And when she was quite alone, she took it out and looked at herself in the watery glass. I'll give it to Freya tomorrow, she thought. But the days passed and Eliza kept the mirror secret. The days passed and Freya grew thinner and even paler. She no longer laughed or danced on the sand, but spent her days searching, searching, searching for the lost myrrh. The other families began to mutter about Freya. Their catches had dwindled to almost nothing since she had arrived. And now the weather was so dark and stormy, it was dangerous to go out to sea at all. One wild night, Eliza couldn't sleep. The waves crashed against the harbour wall. Eliza picked up the pink and gold shell that Freya had given her when they first met and put it to her ear. At first, Eliza heard only the storm outside. Then very faintly, she heard a voice singing, Let me go, let me go home. Eliza looked at Freya sleeping restless, restlessly at her side. She knew what she must do. She crept to her hiding place, took out the mirror and gently tucked it into Freya's hand. Then she climbed back into bed and fell into a deep sleep. In the morning, the wind had dropped. Pale sunshine spilled into the room. Freya was gone. Tom set sail on calm sea. Before he left, he held Eliza extra tight. What shall I bring you today, my brave little dolphin? Eliza smiled a sad little smile. But that day, Tom came back with nets full of fish. And from then on, the village fishing nets were always full. And Tom's was the fullest of all. And that day, Eliza made new friends. Now she loves playing with the other children. They collect shells and Eliza shows them how to build mermaids out of sand. When she puts the beautiful pink and gold shell to her ear, she still hears Freya's sweet voice singing to her. And the songs she sings are of her ocean home and the silver fish that play there. And sometimes in the still rock pools or in the deep green ocean when Eliza is out in Tom's boat, she thinks she sees Freya smiling up at her through the water. Can you see that? Yeah, that's the end of that one. I had never read that one before, boys and girls, but it's a really lovely story. I hope you enjoyed it too. All right. Thank you very much for listening. Slán.